I never thought I'd find you. What in the heck are you doing now? John, I've heard that here at Silver Creek Valley Country Club, the place is loaded with treasures. Look at this. No, no, that's the I... golf. First hole, second hole, beautiful place here. We're going to play some golf. I found a nickel. There's all cut. Yeah, great. Did you see that? What? There's a mermaid. Yeah, great. Look Next at... thing you're going to see a, an Aladdin genie coming out of a bottle. No, no. We'll look, change his name to Merlin. There... Coming up, Merlin and John hooked on golf. This guy's something, I'll I tell mean, you. I mean, there's treasure. Jo John? John. From the Silver Creek Valley Country Club in San Jose, California, this is Hooked on Golf, presented by Nextel, your inside look at the game of golf. And now your hosts, Mitch Jurisic and John Abendroth. Our ninth season starts at Silver Creek Valley Country Club. Who's on the show, John? Hey, Forrest Fezzer, one of my heroes is a junior golfer. He's going to be on a lesson, Grant Spaith, and a lot of fun. All that and more coming up on Hooked on Golf. Hooked on Golf is brought to you by the Twin Hill Golf Company, the best new golf apparel for quality, comfort, and design. By the Plumas Pines Golf Resort and its spectacular Longboards Restaurant in picturesque Gray Eagle, California. 530-836-1420, a special place in time. By Golf Today Magazine, best in the West. McGregor V-Foil, forged made easy. VIP Golf Club, your premier online golf destination and by San Francisco Golf Services, part of the Hooked on Golf family. For corporate outing or golf consulting, call John at 650-692-6261 or on the web at www.hookedongolf.com. Coming up, the front nine when Hooked on Golf returns. Hi everyone, welcome to Hooked on Golf. This week's venue is the Silver Creek Valley Country Club John, in a spectacular setting, we're standing virtually in the shadow of a clubhouse that looks like an Italian villa. You can see the beauty that abounds on this golf course. This is absolutely spectacular, John, but where are we? Well, we're in the southeast part of San Jose, ah. probably 10 miles from the city center, mm -hmm. kind of back in a, a rolling hill area, hillsides where it was farmland at one point, and just absolutely stunning homes out here in this community. Uh, just a wonderful spot. The, the golf course was originally designed by Ted Robinson about 10 years ago. The developer was Shea Holmes. Uh, a real family-oriented area here. There's lots of activities. The members have taken ownership of the golf course, but they, they just recently went through a, a, a little bit of a redesign. Yeah, they, they had some new features that were added, good, some work on the greens and the tees. That's a fairly typical situation where the, the home builder will turn the golf course over to the members at some point. Mm -hmm. They brought in a fellow named Mike Strantz, mm -hmm. very known architect, and a fellow named Forrest Fesler. For you history nuts in Northern California, <laughs> the same guy that was a great golfer, San Jose, one of my heroes is a, a junior golfer. Yep. Great tour career. Now he's doing a lot of work on golf courses, and to come back home here has got to be a thrill for him. Absolutely does. And I'll tell you what's going to be a thrill for me. Let's get over to the second hole and take our Let's first look here at Silver Creek Valley Country Club. John, uh, a par four that's a dog leg left, slightly uphill. Force carry to get over a, uh, a barranca there, but probably shouldn't come into play. You want to avoid the fairway bunkers, though. Yeah, and what's nice here, we talk about a bailout area, and you've got it both on the tee shot here and once you get to the green that probably 80% of the players hit the ball out to the right a little bit, <laughs> and you've got some room here where it sets up that way. So, so give yourself a little work that way. It's my kind of golf course that's got room yeah. to the right, and when you have that second shot, it's a slight dog leg left hole, and, and the, the, the hole or the green is, is actually above you a little bit, so keep that in mind when you pick, pick that club. And as we both did, we picked the right-hand side of the green. Didn't want anything to do with that bunker on the left. Yeah, it worked out well. It's a nice golf hole. Absolutely. A great start. Good start for us so far. It really was. This is a very fair golf hole. Nice warm-up. Oh, I like it. I like it. Look at you. <laughs> How about a little room service? <laughs> John, the fourth hole is a par three downhill, uh, just about a medium iron for both of us. But we've always rated holes in, a, in our top 10 or top 100. Now we're going to rate bunkers, right? Yeah, let's start the list right here with that big one right in front of the green. 
biggest bunker in Northern California is what we're told. And I'm proud to say I missed it, pal. Yeah, you missed that one, but not the other one. <laughs> yeah, well, I did get in that bunker. And if I say so myself, I hit my bunker shot of the year. Uh, I don't know if I can get uh, any better than that, but what a great part three. Well, it really is, and what I like about this, it's a relatively long hole, and the nice thing is it's downhill a little bit. Sure. And so it gives you about a one club advantage, so, you know, you, again, you feel, you know, pretty, pretty much a success because of that extra distance you'll get off that club. Absolutely. Hey, John, we're going to play a par five now as we go over to the eighth hole. Uh, it's an uphill, slight dog leg left. But one of the things I noticed was a bunker that was put in that's not very far off the tee, but it kind of gets your eye looking to the right a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And, and one of the things I like here, on the right side, there's some mounds that act as sort of a barrier, almost kind of like the Wrigley Field wall. <laughs> It'll keep balls in play that may drift off into the homes or out of bounds there. Right. So it, it saved my Aaron shot there. And I think the two fairway bunkers that are up by the green, one's about, you know, 75, 80 yards short of the green, the other about 60 kind of an optical illusion. It looks like you can just flip it right over those and get it on the green, but there's still some distance there. Yeah, and I think if you have your choice, get the ball as close to the green here as you can. That may mm -hmm. seem obvious, but you know, if you're having a layup opportunity, get it up close so that that shot to the green is a little more easy to predict. Really neat stone wall behind that green, too. I, I You'll see that look out here several times in Silver Creek Valley, and I, and I love it. Can you say ricochet? Yeah, ricochet, <laughs> exactly. Well, we're going to sashay up to the ninth tee, and when you come here, do yourself a favor. Stop for a moment and smell the roses. If you're here on a clear day, you can see the Silicon Valley clear up to San Francisco. The elevation is that high on this par four. Well, this is a real stunner. You feel like you can drive it all the way to the clubhouse out yeah. on the horizon. And it's fun to play a hole like this now and then because of the extra distance you get. And uh, I hit a nice drive there. It was a lot of fun. I hit a pretty good tee shot, too. And as we were driving down in the cart and I looked where that pin placement was, <laughs> I, I was honest and I said, if this is anywhere near the flagstick, I've pushed it. Let's check the tape. Did we get that? We did have that <laughs> quote, did. I think. And then you went for the for the flagstick and, and hit a great shot in there. Well, results are what we're out here for, <laughs> and we both had great great results there. Well, I just wanted to be honest with the folks. So that's that's all. Hey, I enjoyed my my look at the front nine here. Can't wait to get to the back nine. Got a lesson for me before it's we go? Lesson time. It's going to help you and the folks at home. Hey, he's going to fix our game. Here's Johnny. <laughs> For information about memberships at Silver Creek Valley Country Club, call area code 408-239-5888 or visit them on the web at www.scvcc.com. John Abendroth. Let me jump in here for a minute, Mitch. Sorry oh, to interrupt sure. you. No, no. I don't think we're holding up any play. And, no, there's nobody coming. I've been dying to give give you this lesson. On side hill stuff? Side hill, uphill, downhill. Oh, good, because I, I think, don't know what to do. I think it gives a lot of the, the folks at home problems because a lot of times I think you even try the opposite of what you really should try, which happens a lot in golf, believe it or not. Okay. And let's talk about this. Let's get Mitch set up to hit this shot. Okay, I'm, how's that? And here's a common thing. Mitch has got his weight back maybe on the right foot a little bit, and it would seem comfortable, Mitch, to sort of level yourself into the hill for balance. Yeah. The problem is, is that's exactly the opposite of what you want to do. Here, what you want to do is lean on the left foot a little bit. On the left And foot. now what you're doing is you're leveling your body more to the plane of the hill. I got you. Okay. That and, makes and, sense. Well, that's, that's why we're doing it. Okay. <laughs> and, and the idea is that now I'm going to be able to keep the club moving down the plane of the hill. I see a lot of people that top the ball because they're back here and the club really never gets down to the ball. Gotcha. Okay. Probably the more important part of this is imagine if I was a left-hander. Okay. Or if we were hitting up this hill. All right. The, the common thing for an average person to do would be to want to lean into the hill. Same idea of getting comfortable with your balance. Yeah. But now I'm hitting where I'm going to sort of drop the club against the angle of the hill, which again is wrong. So what I want to do here is I want to put a little bit of weight back on my rear foot. And now, again, I've got my shoulders level to the plane of the hill, mm. and I'm going to swing more up the angle of the hill. And that's a real key thing. And now, what about club selection for those kind of things? Well, it, it'll vary. Downhill, it'll take loft off the club. So, okay. for example, a sand wedge is going to be more like a pitching wedge. I got you. The big key with club selection, if you're, let's say, 100 yards to 150 yards, right. I like to take at least a club or more. Uh, than I normally would, especially on an uphill shot. Gotcha. Because I don't want to have to ever swing hard because my balance is already off. Right. And I want to be nice and steady to hit this shot. Oh, this is great, John. So I've, let's get you set up here. See, usually I would 
try to hit one of those well, kind of let's things. let's get you lined up a okay, little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to Get that weight on the left foot. On the left foot. How's that? That's real good. Now just it? swing that right down the hole. Boy, I tell you, that that, that feels better, too. Okay, very good. You, you'll be a better player with it. I, I hope so. This week on From the Fringe, we have a bonus. We have two guests in one as we say hello to former PGA Touring Pro, great player Forrest Fesler, who's now in the golf design business and was responsible for some of the refurbishing here at Silver Creek Valley. Now, before we start talking about that, I have to go back to the 1974 U.S. Open, the massacre at Wingfoot. You were in contention for a long time. Seven over par won that U.S. Open. Yeah, it, uh, it was a massacre. It, it definitely was a massacre. Yeah, I'm, I'm just hoping and I'm praying along with the folks out there, you didn't bring any of your, those thoughts from Wingfoot into your design well, uh, look features. Well, not really, no. <laughs> okay, we, we, we made sure we didn't have Roth, and, you know, it, uh, we will never do anything like that. That's great. No. How, how did you get into the design business? Uh, in 83, is my last year on tour, I had a chance to build my own golf course in Tallahassee, Florida. Ooh. And yeah. then 10 years later, Mike and I, connected again and started uh, designing golf courses. Good for you. Forrest, you started out right down the hill here in San Jose, great junior career here and, and uh, playing in school. It's got to be a great thrill to come back and, and virtually do work right in your own backyard here. Yeah, in fact, just up the valley here, uh, I was raised in, uh, for about 15 years. And uh, Roger Malpe uh, went to high school with him and Jim Plunkett. Now, now talk about the memberships, like specifically members here. And first of all, you don't have to have a home here at Silver Creek Valley Country Club to, to be a member. But what was the what was the goal or the target, your your aim when you were doing the redesign here? What did you have in mind? Well, the, the membership actually bought the course a few years ago, mm -hmm. and they saw that it needed uh, a lot of work. Yeah. Um, and it did. It, it had uh, bunkers that were set too far away from greens. Everything was kind of... Uh, I'd call it industrial looking. Mm -hmm. and we try to create a more of a, a ragged edge to the bunker lines, more of a Strance McKenzie type of a look to it. Gotcha. And to make it more playable. There are okay. a lot of areas that people can run the ball up in the green. Mm -hmm. They got in the bunker, they're too far away. It's a long bunker shot, it's a hard shot in golf. Uh, eliminate a lot of bunkers, create contours and fairways to bounce balls back into the fairway so it became more playable. Uh, added a bunch of tees. So uh, the consensus so far has been extremely well. Members love it. They've had sure. actually qualifying for the AT&T here a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and everyone's had great things to say about it. And that's just great to hear. And you, you mentioned some of the mounting. What I noticed out here is that a number of the mounds are, are balanced on the right side of the fairway. And for the, you know, the high percentage of people who hit a fade, it's going to actually work the ball back into the center of the fairway. I, I, I applaud that. That's very good. Very and I think good. that that's one of those features that you, you sort of sneaks up on you. You don't realize it. But then you get three or four of those bounces in a day of play, right. and you realize that it was actually done for a purpose. Right. And, the, and the contours have to be long contours. A lot of, a lot of a designers might put little humps in, but you hit the wrong side of the hump, it kicks the ball away from the fairway. So you have to have big contours to make everything kind of kick to one side or the other. So. And I also noticed a couple of features out here. I've always thought that a good design looks more difficult than it really plays. Yes, it does. And there's some of those out here that I say. And I think that's Mike's artistic flair as an artist to make the course always look, appear more harder than what it is. And if you hit a good golf shot to a green, you go, whew, I was, you feel good about yeah. it, you know? And that's, that's the key about designing golf courses. Did you feel like you really accomplished something? Yeah, that's a good yeah. good job there. Hey, Forrest, before we go, for the folks out there, let okay. me just give you a tip in designing courses. Okay. Fairways that all go like this, greens that all go like this, <laughs> we'd love you to death. Funnel right. vision. Thanks Thank for you. spending some time right. with us, Forrest. Appreciate we appreciate it. All right. Nice we'll be back with the back yeah. nine right, right after Thanks. this. Coming up, the back nine at Silver Creek Valley Country Club. Welcome back to Hooked on Golf. It's time to take a look at the back nine here at the Silver Creek Valley Country Club. And John, we found just some real hidden treasures in terms of holes out here. I can't wait to get on the backside. Well, it's a lot of fun. And one of the things that really comes to mind here, Mitch, is the big variety of holes. Yes. And the elevation changes make that and, and a lot of the creativity. But, but it's a lot of fun to play. You know, great great visuals, the bunkering, the lakes. You know, it's just, it's, it's just got it all. And one of the holes that is like that is the 15th, where we're gonna start our look at the back nine here. And, and the one thing I did when I stood on the tee is I said, if there's one place I don't wanna go, it's that bunker on the right. I wish you'd have told me that. That's where <laughs> I went. 
nice design work here with the uphill. It's, it's kind of a, a transition hole where, you know, going up this hill, you, get, you want to hit enough club, more right. club than you normally would for the distance. And the way the green is set up, it's kind of an amphitheater. So if you do carry it a little bit long, mm -hmm. the ball's going to stop and you're going to be in pretty good shape there. Yeah, and I was actually short with my tee shot. And it's, it's one of those type holes that, you know, the second, third, fourth time you come here, you'll start to get the hang of, of you know, what club to hit there. And John, one of the things I noticed, uh, you know, even on the front nine, let's talk a, a little bit about the greens here. Very true, very good condition, these greens. Well, I know in the 10 years, since the golf course has been open that the greens have really been talked about as some of the best around. Mm -hmm. Very, very smooth and you can get plenty of, of speed on them very fast. They've mm -hmm. played a number of, of major uh, qualifying type events here, state amateur type things and I think even the AT&T uh, qualifier for the, for the, uh, the up and coming pros sure. and, and to rave reviews especially about the greens. Absolutely. John, we're going to go over to the 16th hole, a par 5, shortish par 5. Uh, slightly uphill, narrow fairway. Uh, there's there's a bunker there on the left that you have to uh, avoid. And, and I think we're going to show the folks at home, if you pay attention here, there's more than one way to get a birdie. Well, there is. <laughs> and I think that this is a, a hole where choices becomes the word of the day. Yeah. And I fade the ball a little bit, so I was very comfortable hitting a tee shot here because if my fade did, a get, did get away from me, mm -hmm. that the hill on the right's going to kind of protect it a little bit. On the other side of it is if somebody were to be a player that hooks the ball too much sometimes, mm -hmm. that's maybe where you take a, a four wood or, or a long iron yep. and you play this as a, as a you know very substantial three shot hole. So a lot of choices are available to you here. Well, a guy like you can go for this green and two and you just absolutely bombed a, a, a wood into there and, and hit it to about 15, 20 feet. That was spectacular. Well, what really set that up, and, and I'll do the psychological lesson of the day here, okay. I was very comfortable with the distance I had there. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of players who will not make their best swing if they're not trusting the shot. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're trying to hit it too hard to make it go further, or they're trying to ease up on it to not have it go quite as far. But I was totally comfortable with the distance there, and I was able to make a nice, comfortable swing. After you gave me some help with my second shot to aim towards that tree that was out to the right, and I came pretty close to what I aimed yeah. at, uh, got it on the green, and I, I pat you on the back, and, and myself too. A couple of guys walked off with fours on a par five hole. Maybe they'll put up a little plaque for us, but both the hooked on golf guys pretty good. I don't know. You're not that special. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, it was just a thought. Hey, John, let's go over to the 17th hole talking about special. This is just an absolutely wonderful four par. Uh, straight away, big wide landing area for the tee shot. Lake to the left of the green. Well bunkered. Good hole. And again, what I like here, similar to as we talked on the front nine about the second hole, kind of a bailout area. A lot of room to the right here. Stay away from the left side and, and you'll be much happier. And again, the way it's kind of got a little bit of a bowl effect on the right side, mm -hmm. that if you do hit it out there and, and, and on a dry day and you get a little bit of roll, the ball will kind of come back into the fairway for you. So it's a nice design feature that will help your game here. Well, here's what, what baffles me. The same guy that hit such an awful drive, and I, it was just a <laughs> terrible drive, I hit the five wood of the month, or the year, or my career <laughs> into that hole. What a stunner. Yeah, how does that happen? You're really something. You never know what, what shot you're going to hit. <laughs> OK. And you never know what hole you're going to finish on here. I bet you think you finish on 18. We finished on 19. Well, we got to 19 a little sooner than usual. Yeah, and we will get to the real 19th hole here pretty quick. But it's a very clever feature that they have here. I've seen a couple other golf courses very similar where the 18th hole actually comes in as a shot to the green from one side, and then they've built this little tee up on top of the waterfall behind us. Yeah. And they can use it for a variety of reasons. If they're doing work on a hole there, now they've got another hole that they can play sure. as an alternative. And it could be a nice little tiebreaker hole if you have one of your club tournaments and maybe you need to do a little whiskey route and have a playoff. And I've heard that a lot of brides get their pictures taken here if they have their wedding here. And their, their motto is more brides than birdies. John, this has just been uh, a, a great time here. I've enjoyed it. There's some people we need to thank. Yeah, and it's a nice community out here. They've done a great job with the junior program. They're going to have a little health center here. Jay Jackson heads up the golf division. Nice job, Jay. He was a great player at University of San Francisco. And Art Knapp, one of the members here who was instrumental in us being here. What a wonderful guy. And John, to belong to a club like this means that you must really be hooked on golf. Hooked on Golf is brought to you by Sunderland of Scotland, the world's most playable rainwear. VIP Golf Club, your premier online golf destination. And by T, Tournament Event Enterprises, 
To simplify and customize your next golf tournament, call 650-697-5946 and ask for Mitch. Winchester Country Club, offering one to six acre custom estate home sites, custom estate homes, and private golf memberships. Nextel, how business gets done. Call 1-800-NEXTEL-9. We'd love to hear from you. Write us at www.hookedongolf.com.